and this is the uh, weekly Rotary Club Jonesboro meeting, the reigning District 6150 Club of the Year, not once, twice, three times, but four times. I'm glad to have everyone here. And we'll call this meeting to order. Ring the bell. And we'll start with our inspirational moment. Uh, you're braver than you believe, stronger than you seem, and smarter than you think. Christopher Robin. And then we've got our four-way test. And then uh, Rotary is, uh, to, you know, our vision is together we see a world where people unite and take action to create lasting change across the globe in our co communities and in ourselves. I'm glad to have whatever guests we have and, and invite you to come to our, go to our website and and fill out an application for membership and come back and join us anytime. Derek is a uh, licensed professional counselor. He's been practicing for over 23 years. He specializes in the area of anxiety, depression, grief loss, behavioral problems, addictions, compulsions, day-to-day -day life problems, stress, career life, transitions, personal belief systems, and faith, uh, spiritual dilemmas. So uh, we're glad to have Derek here. And uh, Derek, I'm gonna give you the, the floor. Well, uh, thanks for the opportunity to, to speak with you guys today. I, I really do appreciate that opportunity. And uh, well, I want to talk a little bit today about stress. Uh, you know, first of all, kind of define what stress is. You know, we all experience it day to day, some more than other days. It's a state of mental or emotional uh, strain or tension resulting from adverse or very demanding circumstances. So basically stress is something that causes mental strain on behalf of ourselves. You know, I've kind of got this little jingle. You, when we thought about, I guess, back when life was quote normal, uh, prior to COVID, we had this kind of day-to-day -day thing. It might sound something like this. Home, school, church, work, workout, family, friends, home, school, church, work, workout, family, friends. And we've got this day-to-day -day thing that, that happens. And we're all very, very busy with those things. And just our, you know, day-to-day -day norm, I mean, we can get stressed out with those things. Stressed out from work, stressed out from school, or kids in school, or, or who, if, if child's in school. I mean, there's just a lot of stressors out there in the world. But then, in March of this year, you know, our world seemed to stop turning, so to speak. You know, when COVID uh, was, I guess, mid-March, I could say, I guess we could say it's when it really hit Jonesboro and things changed and things began to shut down and close down. Uh, you know, we were, we were forced to look at things differently. So that in and of itself, this unexpected change, we didn't plan this, we didn't ask for it, but it is a very stressful situation, uh, this pandemic that's, that's happening, uh, happened since March and is currently still happening. And, you know, we're trying to figure out what's next. You know, schools are trying to decide uh, how they're gonna function when they start back, uh, hopefully at the end of August. So just a lot of change. And, you know, if COVID wasn't enough, you know, that stress, what you had in, in part of the city of Jonesboro, we had the tornado in, in late, uh, late March. So that adds to things. Uh, and then in May, late May, early June, we've got the civil unrest that's happening in our nation. Um, that added to our own personal things. You know, life's still going on. Uh, Friends, family still going through things, people getting sick, challenges that we face from day to day. So that's really just a, a lot of stuff, a lot of things that, we're, that we have to learn to cope with or deal with. And that's all stress. And I think it's, it's, it's healthy for us to find ways to, to manage that stress. I want to kind of make give you a little analogy here, maybe kind of where it might make even more sense about what stress is. I want you to envision yourself maybe being able to go on a vacation, all right, back before COVID, okay? Don't think about COVID, but think about before COVID. 
So you've got this location that you're planning to go to. Maybe it's in the in the beach somewhere in the tropics, or maybe even a trip over to China to the Great Wall of China. Just somewhere awesome, somewhere that you always wanted to go. So you're really excited about this. You you've talked to your employer, or maybe you're self-employed, and you worked it out where you can go on this trip. So now comes the fun time to pack. So you get your suitcase out, blow the dust off of it, you know, because maybe you hadn't been in a while and you start packing things in your suitcase. Well, depending on what airline you go on, you know, you have a weight limit on how much things you can put in your suitcase. And I think it's 50 pounds, international flight might be more, but we'll, we'll go with 50. So you got 50 pounds of clothes that you can put in your suitcase, right? Everybody with me? Well, I'm at a disadvantage already because I'm a big guy. I'm about six foot five and uh, I wear a size 15 shoe. So my shoes weigh 10 pounds in and of themselves. So I can't get a whole lot more in my suitcase because I already got 10 pounds of shoes. You know, you kind of know what I'm, what I'm saying here. So we've, we've got things we're going to put in our suitcase and we get it all in there. At least we think, and we forget something, and we go back to our bedroom closet, and we put something else in. We go back to the bathroom and put something else in our bag, and we keep stuffing and stuffing and stuffing, thinking, oh, I'll pay the extra fee. It'll be all right. I, I need all these things for my trip. So envision me having all these things, you having all these things in your suitcase, and you're trying to close that suitcase. I mean, you're standing on top of it trying to zip your suitcase so it will close. You finally get it closed. You head out the door. You get over to the Memphis International Airport. You park in the garage, and, and you're running a little bit late because there was construction on the way. That stressed you out. That worried you, wondering if he's going to be able to check in for your flight. So then you start kind of jogging. You start trying running through the little tunnel before you check in at American Airlines or Delta. Well, what happens is you get in too big a hurry. I stumble, I get in too big a hurry as I'm running through the terminal. I fall down, my suitcase, you hear a, a loud thud. I look back behind me and all my stuff is laid all over the Memphis International Airport because the sides of my suitcase blew out. I had too much, too many things in my suitcase. You know, it wasn't designed to have more than 50 pounds in that suitcase. So I tell you that little uh, story because we're a lot like suitcases as far as humans. We carry things around with us from time to time. And we, these weights that we have, and we don't know how to deal with these weights. And sometimes the stress seems so unbearable that we kind of, we might have a breakdown like the suitcase, or we might feel like we're gonna have a breakdown and, and we just don't know what to do because we're just so stressed and so worried. Because, you know, a human, anyone, can only take so much pressure or so much strain on one's life. Well, there's some warning signs when, uh, regarding stress. First, our body tells us when we're stressed. Just think about the last time maybe you were stressed out. Maybe you were, you know, uh, in a traffic jam, you know, here in Jonesboro between five and six on Red Wolf Boulevard, you know, or maybe you're waiting your turn at Walmart and, you know, you were backed up and you couldn't get in and out. I mean, certain things happen to our body. Sometimes we feel muscle tension. Sometimes our heart starts beating really, really fast. Sometimes, you know, we have stomach problems. We have a stomach ache or an upset stomach. Uh, we just can't relax. Those are, uh, our, that's our body giving us signals that, hey, you're kind of stressed out here. You're, the norm of your body is not happening. Something is triggering some stress. A lot of times it's our thinking. We have negative thoughts or feelings. We, we feel like we're in a dark place or we might feel anxious or nervous or we become easily frustrated with, with people that we work with or maybe even our loved ones, somebody we never thought we'd be, you know, irritable with or short with. We find ourselves being short with them when we think, wow, wonder why that's happening. Well, that's happening because you're you have so much going on that it's coming out in an unhealthy way 
the people that you don't really want it to. The third thing, warning sign, is you just might have some difficulty uh, thinking, difficulty concentrating, focusing on certain things, maybe some confusion, you know, just easily distracted. That could be a, another warning sign. Uh, also, they talk about social conflict. Some of the social conflict might be just ir overall irritability, just anger. This, the least little thing can cause you to become very angry or upset. Uh, sometimes you find yourself arguing with others, pointing fingers, just, just being involved in some social conflict that maybe it's not typically you. You're not that person that typically gets in an argument or a conflict or disagreement with others, but it's not normally how you behave. But stress sometimes takes us down that path where we, we do behave that way. I guess what I want to say, one of the most important things about stress is, is to be aware of the stress. Self-awareness is major. It's the key. And being able to acknowledge that, being able to see that, that, hey, you know, I don't feel right. I don't feel like the old Derek or the old Tom or the old John or Jane. I, I, I just don't feel the same. And when that's happening, I encourage you or challenge you to take a look within yourself to see, okay, what's going on here? Could it be stress? Could it be that I'm maxed out? You know, could it be that I'm kind of like that suitcase that I've just kind of stuffed too much in and it, it, it kind of came out at a time that I really wasn't expecting that? You might ask, well, well Derek, how, how am I going to know? How am I going to know if I'm stressed out? How am I going to know if, it, if it's too much? Well, there's a little acronym that, uh, that uh, I didn't coin the, the, uh, the acronym, but it's something I found on when I was doing a little research about when I deciding what I wanted to share with you guys. And the acronym is called HALT. HALT, H-A-L-T. H stands for hungry. A stands for angry. L for lonely. And T for tired. So if you're feeling like you're really hungry, you're really, really angry most of the time, you're feeling like you're all alone by yourself. You're tired, you just can't take this anymore. That acronym of HALT probably is a good indicator that you're stressed out and need to do something about that. So HALT, in other words, stop. Let's hit the reset button. Let's do some self-care. We have self-awareness. So let's do some self-care to see how we might could change that, kind of break that cycle. I mean, I know we have a little Zoom conference, but I'd like, I encourage you to unmute your mic and kind of share some things that cause you to be stressful, that you know that are stressful in your life right now. What's some stresses, stressors that you have right now? How about unemployed adult children who've been furloughed due to COVID and you're concerned about how you can help them, uh, not just financially, but just uh, encourage them during this time to, to, you know, we've never dealt with something like this before. Uh, what would be your words of encouragement on that? Right. That's definitely one that's, that's uh, a difficult one, a hard one. Um, my words would be on that is, you know, I think we have to all stand together and support each other. Uh, we have to be there for, the, for, for them to talk with you. Uh, so that they know that you're willing to listen, willing to be there as support and encouragement. Um, I think that's, that's a big thing to help in reducing stress, that someone knows that they're not alone. You know, that, that uh, L in the halt is when somebody's feeling like they're lonely, that they don't have anybody there. So I think that would be key. You, you know, there are also things that we can do. There are all, always things that we can do to reduce those reduce stress or stressors in our life. You know, we can we can go to the gym, we can work out, we can take a walk, 
we can journal, we can write, uh, we can talk to a friend, we can uh, go for a ride in our vehicles, do something outside, gardening. Just everybody has different things, different ways that they can manage their stress. But what happens sometimes when we're experiencing a pandemic or, or something that's so much out of our norm, we, we get out of doing those things that we do for ourselves. We don't practice self-care. So we may not be doing as the things that we used to do to take care of ourselves. And if we're not taking care of ourselves during the pandemic or when troubled times arise, well, then that's going to in, in elevate the stress level and you're just going to feel like, man, I, this, this is just too much. So you're just going to feel all this pressure that you carry around, this weight, these weights that you carry around all the, you know, all the time. You know, but, um, you asked for some questions. Um, I sure. wonder about um, when you're saying take care of self, it seems that that's all I'm able to do right now. Uh, I can't do for others. I can't get out. You know, you'd, I mean, I can take a drive and things like that. Right. But I really can't interact uh, much with people. And there's a feeling of being unable uh, to uh, do the kinds of things that are meaningful. You know, my house is now as clean as it's ever been. I've, re I've tried to repair things. Uh, and so now I have things, more things broken than I've ever had. <laughs> but uh, uh, You're Zoom running out meetings, of things to fix at your home. Yeah. Zoom meetings uh, don't seem to uh, handle uh, the problems of uh, being with people, of not being with people. Right. Yeah, I would agree with that, you know. Zoom or video-based conferencing is a good thing in the, in the fact that you get to see the other person interact. But, but there's something different about when you're physically there with someone, that, that connection that happens when you're one-on-one, face-to-face -on -one, -face with someone. That is a very difficult thing. And, you know, some people are taking different levels of precaution. Uh, I mean if there's any way that a person could social distance when they saw their friends, like uh, I know some people, like if they're getting out in their car and going for a, a drive, they might see the other person and drive and maybe park with the distance and speak with each other through the windows. I know that's not the best. You'd want somebody, you know, sitting there in your living room, having a cup of coffee with you or, or sitting on the back porch or, or, or something like that that's something that's not been able to be done or people are choosing not to do that because of the pandemic. Making it as normal as possible would be a good thing. But that's a, that's a difficult thing to do that you're, as you're bringing to our attention. Thank you for sharing that. You know, when we're talking about uh, dealing with the stress and having awareness of, hey, we, we might need to do something differently. I think it's important for us to, to schedule that. You know, whether we're in pandemic or not in pandemic, we can get very, very busy. Where it's like that little jingle I said earlier, homeschool, church, workout, family, friends. You get in that cycle every day. And sometimes we don't schedule the time to do things for ourselves and practice that self-care. See, my guess is that everybody today on this call had in their phone or in Google Calendar or had a reminder to pop up to log in to this Zoom meeting today because it was scheduled. It was on your calendar or on your phone or your computer, ever how you keep up with that. So I would say if it's not scheduled, for you, it's probably not going to happen. Over the, I'll just give, I'll just self-disclose this briefly for me. Uh, I've always been an active person and still an active person. My wife was encouraging me and challenging me maybe to 
to get to the gym to lift weights. I'm a runner, so I've always done that. But she said, why don't you get to the gym and maybe, you know, see if you can up your game a little bit. And I kind of, you know, argued with her a little bit about that. She said, no, I don't want to do that. But finally, I decided I would. So last November, last October, I started going to a gym working with the trainer. Now, I had never done that before. You know, I thought I was good, and I guess I was, but I wanted to up my game a little bit for my – as a improve my running. So, on Tuesdays and Thursdays from 11 to 1, my schedule is blocked that I'm going to be at the gym doing something. I don't schedule any clients, any patients from that time period because I'm dedicated and committed to that. And for me, that really helps that, hey, I know where I'm going to be. I know what I'm going to be doing. And after I complete the workout, I feel much, much better. You're probably thinking, well, today it's, it's not one o'clock yet. You're on this rotary call. Uh, what I did was I moved my, moved my time around to, to, so I could have the opportunity to speak with you guys. So I went yesterday. So I went I on Monday and I'm going on Thursday. Why did I do that? Because I had it in my schedule. So I challenge you guys to, to do that. I know we're going to have questions, but there is something that I want to just kind of give you some, maybe just some simple uh, tips for caring for yourself. And I can get this to Christy and she can get you get this to you guys if you'd like a copy of it. It's uh, 10 things to do for yourself. This is not rocket science. This is just scheduling time to do for you. Number one, we have to get enough sleep. You know, if we're not getting enough sleep, we're not going to be in an optimal game when we wake up on the, in the next morning. So get some sleep. Number two, we have to eat healthy foods. For the most part, try to eat healthy. Number three, I've already mentioned this, exercise. You don't have to go to the gym. You know, you can walk and back and forth in your office. You can go for a walk. You know, use the stairs when possible rather than elevators, you know. Uh, there's all types of things that you can do for exercise. The fourth thing is vary the, th vary the ways that you do things at work. You know, change things up a little bit. Break out of that routine. Try to, try to mix it up a little bit. That might even be is something that is on the way to work. You know, go a different direction. Go a different route to work. See how might, that might feel when you would do something like that. Same in your work, change up the routine. The fifth thing you can do day to day is do something fun, do something pleasurable. Maybe you like to play, you know, words with friends, do that. You know, maybe you're a news person, watch some news. Hopefully we can watch some sports again live in the near future. Uh, do some pleasurable activity, whatever is pleasurable to you. Cook, garden whatever that might be. The sixth thing is, you know, throughout the day, focus on what you did well. Focus on the good things. You know, give yourself a pat on the back every once in a while rather than thinking, you know what, I did this, but I still need to do these other things. Oh, this looks pretty good, but, you know, eliminate the buts from your life and give yourself a pat on the back and, you know, encourage yourself for the things that you did well. The seventh, uh, the number seven is, you know, learn for your, from your mistakes. Hey, we all make them. I think the key is we learn from the mistakes that we make. The eighth thing is, you know, kind of be lighthearted, maybe share a joke with someone, you know, communicate with each other. Uh, the ninth thing is, Maybe support a colleague, support a friend. If you know somebody that you work with is having a hard time, hey, spend five minutes, 10 minutes just chatting with them, talking with them, seeing if you can encourage them. Because think about how would, how would you feel, you know, if you were having a tough time and somebody came in and, you know, weren't just talking shop, but they pulled up a chair and said, hey, how are you doing? Let's talk. And the last thing is, you know, uh, prayer, meditation. You know, you know, if that's part of your worldview and your belief system, I know we're in the Bible Belt here in the South, and uh, a lot of people here are Christians, and that's part of your worldview, you know, incorporate that, you know, 
pray and meditate. You know, if there's some other type of religion that you adhere to, you know, adhere to those values and belief uh, of that religion as well, whatever your worldview is. So I would say if you kind of can stick to some of those 10 simple things, you'll find a ways, way and ways to kind of cope and deal with the stress that you're experiencing during COVID and after COVID. Questions? Other questions that you might have for me? I tried to keep it pretty short. Yes, I had a question. Um, what about just worry? Would that fall under prayer and meditation? You mean in a way to uh, cope with the worry? Yeah, for example, I have relatives that are essential workers and they're afraid of uh, contracting COVID and I even had couple of family members that are not essential workers and they contracted COVID and somebody has to keep their little baby if it was a couple. And so I feel bad for them and I'm concerned. And then you're waiting every day to hear that whether another person is going to contract it. So, but all these other 10 things, I'm, I, I'm pretty good with those, but I, I'm thinking my worry probably would go under number 10 perhaps. Uh, it could definitely go under that, you know, um, worry or giving your cares or your worries over to your higher power, over to God, if that, that be your higher power, uh, definitely, definitely could help. Uh, I think also uh, talking with friends, you know, having open conversations about what you're worried or you're concerned about, you know, being honest uh, about, you know, what you're worried about, what you're anxious about, and talking through that. And sometimes, you know, the, the, the worry could be so, I guess, uh, heavy on your heart that you might, a person might need to talk to someone uh, like a counselor uh, to process some of that. Because some people by, wor some people by nature are worriers. They're, they're anxious individuals out there. And the pandemic and all the things that's happening now add to it and it can feel like it can be too much. So friends, talking with friends, and maybe even a referral to, uh, to a counselor could be uh, necessary at some time. Thank you for that comment. Derek, there's a, there's a couple, there's a question in the uh, chat box. It says, how do you manage the stress of being in public and you see people that are not wearing a mask? Wow, that's a tough one. Uh, <clears throat> I don't really know how to answer that one. I think that we have to uh, maybe think about ourselves and what we're able to control. Uh, that's what I would say. Uh, well, when I talk with clients in general about things that's out of their control, we always ha always try to bring it back to what you're in control of. If you choose to wear a mask, you're in control of that choice and you make that choice and you put your mask on and, and you smile. And if somebody asks you for your opinion, you share your opinion politely, respectfully, uh, whatever it may be about your view about the mask. So I think uh, that's the main thing that you can do is you know, think about what you can control. And I know there's some uh, discussion in the city about uh, mask and that's kind of coming up with the uh, city council in the next few weeks. So. Okay. And then another question. Uh, uh, time management can be particularly difficult and cause feelings of overwhelm, <clears throat> especially for those with children. What coping mechanisms would be best in these situations? I do think that we have to be mindful of our time and there's only so much time in the day. There's so only, only so many hours in the day that, 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 that we work, so many hours in the day that we're with our kids and we have to to manage that time efficiently and effectively. And if you feel that it's not working, take a step back, evaluate it. And if it's not working, try to implement a different way of doing things. I mean, because you're the best person that's uh, knowledgeable about if something's working or not working. And if it's not, try to do something different. Give yourself permission to do something different to try to adjust to the changes that's happening in one's life. I hope that made a little bit of sense. Another question uh, we have is, uh, I need support in knowing how I can best support my aging parents about their health concerns. It is difficult to see them not, not be able to do what they used to do. 
Yeah, that's that's a very tough one because I I can relate as I have uh, family and grandparents that I'm I'm close to and have been close to. It, it's really hard to know what to say. Number one, I would say uh, being there for them. Where if you can be there in person, wonderful. If because of COVID that you can't, you know, giving phone calls, checking up on them, uh, you know, maybe even going going really old school and writing a letter or sending a card to them, a word of encouragement. Uh, those are things that, that we can do to to help those that that are that are aging and they're really worried about the pandemic. And and I think it's also okay to ask them, ask them what they need. Ask them how you can help them. Sometimes we assume a lot of things as, as adults, and sometimes we're way off in left field and we really don't know what they need until we ask them and really have the conversation with them about what their needs might be. Okay, and then uh, Imelda had asked to restate the 10 ways to cope with stress, which you could, you could run through those quickly, but I would like to get, if we could get a list of that, we'll get that put in the, uh, the newsletter that'll come out. This okay, in there again, this is, not, this is not something I came up with. I want to give credit to the, to the lady, Dr. Uh, Stam, <clears throat> who came up with these uh, kind of 10, 10 things to do each day. Uh, and it's a little, it's called a compassion fatigue wallet card. You can carry this with you. You can post it, you can put it in your office. And it's just, it's a reminder about what to do when stressed. And it's kind of correlated to a, an instrument that they developed. It's really an inventory. It's called the uh, Professional Quality of Life Scale. And it's, it's a way for, uh, for a person to go through this, these scaling questions and it identifies if a person's at risk of burnout in their uh, in their job or if they're distressed, but that's kind of correlated to that. But I'd be glad to get that to, to Christy. Well, I would like to thank again you, you for uh, allowing me the opportunity to speak with you guys. It, it's very humbling that uh, Christy asked me to speak with you and it is an honor. And, you know, uh, I just encourage everyone to show support to each other, to show love, care, and compassion. And, and if you need to talk to someone in, in more depth, uh, my information, I think, is, uh, is there. Uh, you can just give me a call here at the Refuge. I'd be glad to see what I could do to help you. Thanks, Derek, for the presentation. That is uh, really good. I know that these times are difficult for a lot of people, a lot of people feeling a lot of different things. And, and uh, I think it is good to think about when you get so many things going at once to just kind of halt and uh, – evaluate where you are and maybe back up and reset so absolutely absolutely thank you Derek okay thank you all right and so next week everybody can join us again we'll have Dr. Kim Wilbank superintendent of Jonesboro Public Schools and she's going to inform us on their plans for starting school or how this is going to look for them it's like me you've got four kids of being in public school here soon kind of curious how that's going to look and and go for this next school year. So our thought for the day, uh, keep your face always toward the sun, sunshine and shadows will fall behind you. Walt Whitman. And uh, I guess before I adjourn, it's gonna see if anybody else has anything for the good of the group. I guess if not, we will stand adjourned until next week. Everybody look for ways to maybe uh, uh, present an act of rotary to someone this week if you can. Everybody have a great week. And I'll see you next week.